Okay. Um, so excellent segue with the, uh, the recording uh, warning there. So um, as far as why we're recording, so what we're here for today is um, to introduce everyone uh, to a new feature in Osmus that we've been working on for um, a couple of years now. So what today we're going to do is it's going to be in three parts. So the first part is I'm just going to take a few minutes, um, go through a few slides just to give everybody some background. I know several of you have seen these slides before, so I apologize if you're seeing them again. Um, but I know some of you haven't. And so I just want to make sure everybody understands um, what the background behind this project is. And then the, the bulk of what we'll do, and this is the piece of why we're recording, is just that Ruth and I are going to demo this new feature that's going to be in Osmos. And um, we want to use the recording as a resource for you all and your colleagues, your teams, right? So they can look back to that video of just to see how the tool works as a, you know, a training tool, basically. And then the third thing we'll do after we're done with the demo is we'll just like, you know, Kim was saying, we'll open it up and want to know what questions you have. And then we'll talk about um, next steps as this um, tool is going to be rolled out over the coming few weeks. So, um, all right, well, with that, I will go ahead and share my screen really quick just to um, provide a few slides for everyone. Okay, everybody can see this all right? Yes, we can see it. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, so yeah, as I mentioned, so what we're here to talk about today is a new feature that's going to launch in Osmos at the end of the week. And, uh, but this is a, a project that's been a couple of years in the making um, to create this, you know, what we call, have been calling uh, an intelligent workforce system. So what this involves is, um, well, I guess I already went through this piece. So just as a reminder, I'll give you a little background. We'll talk about the, uh, what the project is and, um, do the demo and then we'll have a nice discussion afterwards. So to give you some background on this project. So what this initiative is called, it's referred to as Data for the American Dream or D4AD for short. So if I say D4AD, that's just referring to the project overall. Um, what this was was about, um, um, well, it's more than two years ago now, I guess, because time's been moving fast. But uh, so this would be more kind of in the winter, spring of 19. Uh, there was an RFP out there from uh, this group called Data for the American Dream that was philanthropically backed primarily by Schmidt Futures. And um, what they wanted to do was um, I'll see if, well, basically, how can we use data to, to help job seekers is basically what the goal was. And um, there was about, uh, there was lots of different um, applicants there. In the end, there were three states that were selected. So there was us, there was New Jersey, and there was Colorado. So three states ended up getting this grant. And um, I'll tell you a little more about what we proposed and what we did. Um, but to kick this off, I want everybody to know who our partners were. So um, if you're familiar with our bureau, you know that we're in the Department of Technology Management and Budget. But um, you also probably know that in a lot of states, we would be in the Department of Labor and we partner extremely closely with the Department of Labor. So um, our partners in LEO, in particular, uh, LEO Employment and Training and uh, Stephanie Beckmore and her team, Joe Billig, right, we've been working very closely with all of them throughout this process. They were part of our application for the grant. Also working very closely with Michigan Works Southwest. I think I saw Amy on the call. So um, they've been one of our key partners from the beginning as we went through this process, as well as uh, the rest of the group there at the Upjohn Institute. And then we also had some additional funding from uh, US Department of Labor grant as well. Um, what was the goal of this project though? Just you know, really big and broad. You know, what it was is, so this group, D4AD, they had some target populations that they wanted to uh, really look at. And those were essentially the unemployed, underemployed, um, low income and lower skilled workers. So these were the groups they wanted to target. And of course we read that and we're like, well, um, who better to serve this group than uh, the experts at Michigan Works, right? You're working with these individuals every day. So um, our proposal was from the beginning geared around how can we uh, figure something out to assist and support our Michigan Works partners um, in helping these target populations using uh, some kind of intelligent workforce system. Um, 
So what we wanted to do was we know, and you all know that especially in OSMIS, but also in uh, PMTC to some extent, right? There's a lot of administrative data. It's a very rich data source. There's a lot of things that go into it. So what we wanted to do was think of ways that we could leverage that data as much as we could um, to provide some data-driven personalized support for the individuals that we're trying to help. Um, so what did that look like a little more specifically? Um, we wanted to create some tools that really provided, again, this, this personalized recommendation. We wanted to get things as customized as we could using the data available to us with the ultimate goal being, of course, to improve the labor market success of these individuals, to get them not just into uh, any job, but a good job, um, some kind of sustainable employment. And uh, there were two groups in particular we thought of as the users for this tool that we wanted to develop. So one is, of course, Michigan Works staff, so the case managers, the individuals working with job seekers day in and day out. We wanted to develop something for them. We also wanted to develop something for the job seekers themselves. So um, as we go through today, you'll see that um, what I'm going to focus on is going to be you know, the version that's available for case managers to Michigan Works staff. But there's um, also a different version of this tool that's available to job seekers as well. Um, so as we try to create this intelligent workforce system, um, we started building this. So the, the foundation for this actually goes back uh, more than 20 years. So the Upjohn Institute um, developed something similar for the state of Georgia back in the late 90s. And, um, we wanted to, to build off that, right? Um, bring in uh, new data, uh, new methods, but also um, make this specific to Michigan. So what makes the tool innovative, as I said, it's the data that goes into it. Right? We have a lot of administrative data sitting in Osmos as well as PMTC. And we wanted to see how we could use that data to create some personalized recommendations and how we serve job seekers. So some of what we're going to show you today, it involves um, you know, predictive algorithms that leverage machine learning, artificial intelligence. Some of it doesn't, but that's one of the key innovations is providing some tools for case managers uh, that leverage these advanced methodologies. Um, just another you know, uh, tool in the toolbox for them to help make decisions on how to serve folks. And then the other thing that we did with this that was innovative was you know, we brought multiple data sources together. So we know there's a lot of different um, sources, tools that you're using, right? Um, Osmos, PMTC, Training Connect, Pathfinder, right? There's a lot of different things out there that you've got to go to. We wanted to bring that all together in one place when we built these tools. Um, and then the last thing before we get into any more specifics is uh, the development process. We really wanted to focus on the users. We didn't want to just create something and make, we want to make sure it was user-friendly. We wanted to make sure that it was intuitive and that it was useful. So from the beginning, we've had this um, user-centered design methodology that we've tried to focus on uh, very strongly, but you know, something gets developed using some input, we get feedback on that, we make changes and we repeat that process over and over. And that was a big part of uh, what Michigan Works Southwest helped us out with uh, in this partnership was providing that input and that feedback as we develop these tools. So uh, the tool itself um, only recently got a name. It is called Career Explorer. And so it will be referred to as Career Explorer both um, in Osmos as well as PMTC. So this is the name of the tool. And to give you a few more specifics on what the Career Explorer tool has. Um, so for the version we're gonna focus on today, as I said, it's integrated into Osmos. So this is gonna be something that's already in an environment and particularly the Osmos dashboard, which we'll show you in a minute. But um, this is integrated in Osmos. Um, and it's basically meant to do a few things, but you know, provide an assessment of uh, where someone's at right now, those current opportunities, as well as information regarding you know, program services that are most likely to help someone make a successful transition to employment. Specifically, um, what are some features that are in the tool? There are you know, benefits of training likelihood of reemployment, um, expected duration of a job search, um, jobs related uh, to an existing occupation, as well as the local labor market information. We try to make things as local as we could. That was a key piece of feedback. And then also what training opportunities are available in that local area. Um, if we look at the 
Career Explorer version of the same PMTC. So um, it's going to be integrated into PMTC. Uh, people have to log into their PMTC account. Job seekers will have to log into their account to take advantage of the tool and the features that it offers. Um, it doesn't have as many features, and we'll go through that in the demo, like which ones are available to case managers only versus job seekers at large. But um, so it has fewer features. It's a different data source, of course, right? It's on PMTC, not Osmus. Um, as everybody here knows, just because somebody's on PMTC doesn't mean they have an Osmus account. Um, and again, just providing information on various career pathways uh, and opportunities available. So with that, I think we can go ahead and we can start our demo. So let me stop sharing and then I'm gonna let Ruth go ahead and share her screen. Is it sharing correctly? Yep, got it. Looks good. Okay, so um, I guess for purposes of editing this video, we'll say, you know, so the uh, training portion starts now that I might want to record. So, um, so this is the uh, Osmos dashboard that everybody should be, I, I believe is familiar with. And what we're going to do today is just look at a test account to show you the features of the Career Explorer tool. So um, as everybody knows, I think you can just search out anyone you're working with in the Osmos dashboard, and then you'll, um, get some key information about that individual that's pulled up. In this case, we just have our, our test account. To access the Career Explorer tool, you can see that the individual's name is highlighted. You can just click on the individual's name and that's how you enter the tool. And you'll see that a new tab uh, pops up in your browser. So now you're in the Career Explorer tool just by clicking on the individual's name through the Osmos dashboard. So um, you can see across the top, there are three tabs. One says user profile, one says reemployment info, and another one says pathways. So we'll cover each of those in turn. So the landing page here, we land on the user profile. Uh, you can see off on the left, it's giving you some just uh, basic information about the individual that you're working with. And, um, but what we really wanna focus on is the benefits of training piece that's you know, taking up the majority of the screen here. So what this is doing is, so this is all, um, at first, this is all, you know, these are predictive uh, algorithms driving these features. These are things that are only available to case managers. These aren't available to job seekers in the PMTC version of the Career Explorer tool. What this is meant to do is help, we know that especially with that transition from WIA to WIOA, a few years ago, right, we can get people directly into training. We don't have to go through, um, you know, core and intensive and all that stuff anymore if we don't want to. So just to assist in making that decision about um, if someone might benefit from training or how they might benefit from training, uh, that's what this piece does. So the first chart at the top is displaying. Uh, so what it does, it takes this information from Osmos. And so there's lots of different types of information that's in there, such as um, we have some, some basic demographic information, of course, but there's also things like um, their employment and wage history. There are things like um, their uh, barriers to employment, right? There are things about their geography, what area they're in, what the local labor market conditions are, all that stuff. So that is all going in to the predictive algorithm and it's providing some uh, personalized output as far as uh, the first one here is showing the um, predicted probability based of um, finding employment. So if this person doesn't get training, they're looking at 66%. Uh, with training, that goes up to 76%. So we see like a 10 percentage point bump is what's predicted as far as a change in employment. Um, and again, this is for similar individuals. So this is how the algorithms work is they take data from people that are similar to the one you're working with. So, okay, so just based off of what we have here of what's in Osmos, uh, this is uh, what the data um, saying we should expect. If we look at uh, wage premiums, this is the second piece. So if someone were to get training, how much more would we expect they would make on an annual basis? Uh, in this case, it's about $5,500 is the expected wage premium from receiving some kind of occupational training. And then the third piece on the bottom here is looking at a training outlook and what's the um, probability of someone completing a training program. And so this is meant to essentially help identify those that might need some help getting across the finish line with some support services or something like that. Um, so that's the, 
main piece we have here on benefits of training, and I should have started off by saying this, right? I mean, this is all meant to be a tool that helps uh, Michigan Works case manage, right? Nobody knows better than Michigan Works staff uh, what somebody needs, right? There's all kinds of information that doesn't go into Osmos. We're well aware of that, right? What we're just trying to do is provide more resources for you all to help make decisions. Um, so again, what this is doing is just taking data from similar individuals and saying, this is what has happened um, with those similar individuals. And so you might expect to happen with this individual as well that you're working with. If we go to the second tab on reemployment info, there's a couple more predictive features at the top. So this is um, what's the reemployment outlook for an individual if uh, they were to not proceed with any kind of additional education and training. So this, this whole page in general is something that we refer to as the um, reality check basically. So this is, if someone doesn't wanna pursue anything, if they wanna stick with the education and training and skills that they have in place right now, what um, kind of outcomes should they expect? So in this case, we're looking at 73% uh, um, reemployment chance within uh, six months. And then also looking at how long should we expect that search to take um, five to eight months. You can also see that um, across the top, there are uh, three different colors. And so what those colors are meant to show is just they'll correspond with the finer text below. So 73%, while it looks, uh, you know, that's a fairly high number, but this is also to let you know that actually, so for what's typical, um, it's actually less than what's typical. If it's orange, that's uh, typical. And if it's green, then that's above what's typical as far as these numbers go. So that's what those colors represent. I should also say, I should have pointed this out on the last page, I apologize. Um, this is specific to the program someone is in. So these predictive features are available for, currently they're available for individuals in the adult program, uh, dislocated worker program and PATH. That's just those three. So programs beyond those three, these features uh, won't be present. So if you were to look at this for someone that let's say is in TAA, then it's just gonna say data not available. Um, but thus ends the, the predictive components. So um, that's where that piece ends. And uh, again, all those predictive components are only available to case managers. Uh, they're not there for job seekers. Um, we think it's important that they have some coaching and some context when looking at that kind of information. So um, that's not in the PMTC version of the tool. Now from here on out, everything we're gonna look at is available to job seekers in the PMTC version of the tool, as well as in um, the version here in Osmos. So the first thing that you can see is now what happens here, now this is a test account. So you notice that um, Ruth changed the occupation that was listed there I think to chief executives when it first loaded up. That occupation is being pulled from Osmos. So this is the field that identifies the person current, uh, person's current or most recent occupation. So that's what comes preloaded in here. And so it's meant to say, okay, so this is the skill set this person has now. Um, what you know, does that look like in the context of a local labor market? And you can see that in the top right, it says the South Central region. If you know our data fairly well, then you know that. Um, Prosperity region is about as local as we can get for a lot of stuff with the, a few exceptions. So you can change the prosperity region though. You can also look at statewide data, but the default is to the local prosperity region that the individual is in. And what the chart is showing is, okay, so for, in this case, waiters and waitresses, um, how much do they make at varying levels of experience in the region? How does that compare to all occupations on average in the region? Um, you also see some um, basic LMI at the bottom as far as uh, annual openings for that occupation, growth rates, and a wage score. So um, you can see that this occupation doesn't pay very much. Um, also, um, off on the left, uh, I should have pointed out where it says data not available. Um, this is a test account. There's nothing to link, but for individuals that are in here, you'll see that's going to um, display what someone's previous income was before coming into Michigan Works. So, um, and that's gonna be pulling from administrative data of how much they actually made. Um, what else am I forgetting on here? So we can see uh, bottom left, there's a link to ONET. So if you're interested in more information on a certain occupation, you can go there. Um, 
on the far right, we can also see, you know, that says to not just what the median wage is for this particular occupation, but how it compares to the regional median. So you can uh, quickly see if this is something that uh, pays well relatively in the region or not. As I said, we can see this doesn't. Um, regardless, let's say in this case, somebody wanted to uh, stick with this occupation. Below here, we can see these are live job ads from Pure Michigan Talent Connect. So if anybody wants to look at what's available in their area, you can see these are local. Again, like we tried to make this as local as possible. Um, these are job ads in the region for the occupation that comes preloaded. Um, and you can also change that occupation above though, as you saw Ruth do a little bit ago. So if you, this is just the top three. If you click view all employment opportunities, uh, you can see all kinds of them that are in PMTC. You can um, sort, you can filter, um, you can do all kinds of stuff as far as the search function goes. And then um, you can also click on each of these tiles and it will take you uh, into um, a more detailed description of the job. And then uh, if there's anything to link to within that job ad, that link will be provided. Um, if we can just go back to reemployment info page one more time, Ruth, before we jump. Um, so next to previous experience, you'll see a print icon. And if you click that, we're not going to go ahead and go through all the motions here, but uh, you can see that everything, the important information that's on this page has been listed. So there's um, basic information about the occupation you're looking at. There's uh, the wage information there, as well as other LMI. And then there are also um, links, or excuse me, the, the relevant job ads, job postings for this occupation. And then um, when you print, then the, there'll be links that are integrated as well. So um, whether you're working with somebody in person or even if you're still working remotely with an individual, right? This is something you could print off and hand them. This is something you could uh, save as a PDF and send to them. So this is the, and then you'll see as we go through the rest of the tool, this print functionality remains intact. Okay, so that's the second tab on reemployment info. And then the, the third tab is pathways. And so if we look here, then we can see that, um, let's say somebody decides, I wanna pursue some other kind of occupation. Um, at the top, you can see a search bar where you can enter uh, an occupation. You can also enter a field of study, depending on which way you wanna um, search for it. If you don't even know where to start, of course, uh, we've got some options at the bottom. If you're familiar with our career outlook, then you'll notice those categories are, are fairly familiar, right? So it's just from left to right, this is an increasing amount of edu education and training that's required for um, various occupations. The other piece on here that I wanna draw attention to is these. some of these are highlighted and some of these are bolded rather, uh, sorry. And uh, some of these are bolded, some are not. And the bolded occupations are those that are related occupations to what their most current or recent occupation happens to be that's recorded in Osmos. So if someone wants to continue on a career path that they're already on, then those are the occupations they wanna look at. If they wanna start fresh or just look at anything, then any of these will work, of course. Um, and you can click on any of these if you want. Um, but we can also search. So let's say if we wanted to search out nursing, we can do that. Um, you can see the search results pop up. You can select the occupation. And then this looks quite similar to what we were looking at previously, uh, as far as um, all the basic labor market information is available here. Um, but what's new is you can see at the bottom, a couple of comparison features. So um, one thing you can do is compare to my past job. So if you click that, um, so again, this is a test account. In this test account, the identified occupation was chief executive. So um, it provides a comparison between chief executive and registered nurse, which is the occupation we're looking at here. Um, if you wanna just look at one of those two, you can click on focus on this job and go back. But uh, for now, let's look at this head-to-head -head comparison. And so we can see um, what's provided in the chart is, um, it's not just wage information about the region and one occupation, but it's both occupations next to each other, as well as what the um, regional averages look like, as well as at the bottom here, you've got those additional metrics as far as um, openings and wage score and projected growth rates. Um, also, as we'll see, as we go a little further, there's educational opportunities um, for each of these 
occupations that are available. These are, uh, they, it's defaults to Training Connect options to our eligible training provider list. So that's the what pops up. So um, as well as being localized when available. And then there's of course job opportunities linked from PNTC at the bottom as well. Um, well, let's say um, we're not too concerned with chief executive and uh, we want to look at some other nursing options that might require less in the way of education and training. We can compare to other jobs and put in any occupation you want. Um, but we'll do a comparison between RNs and LPNs here. And uh, again, you can see provides a direct comparison between the two um, on the left in that chart. Also provides um, comparisons of those key labor market metrics at the bottom. Over on the right, we can see this is the you know, median wage for uh, the two occupations and how that compares to the median in the region overall. Um, also, um, if we scroll up just a tad, Ruth, sorry. Um, the print functionality is on this page as well. I just want to point that out. Um, so you can click there and just like last time, it's going to um, put all this information together on both occupations that you're looking at. Um, as well as the educational opportunities and the job opportunities for those related occupations. And then um, I guess one last piece we want to review is just uh, similar to with job ads, also with the educational opportunities. So you can see, so this was um, something that was in the you know, South Central regions in the Lansing area. We're looking at nursing, so you can see that these are local options for both uh, RN and LPN. So let's say we take a look at uh, RN, right? um, Jackson College has an, an offering for LPN, click on that. Uh, we can see um, a few key stats on the program, such as its cost, such as its credential attainment rate, as well as its um, median income of those individuals that complete the program. So for those of you that aren't familiar, um, you know, this is something that is uh, put together through wage records. So we're linking education records and wage records to provide that uh, $41,900 number. So that's actually what people are making after they exit the program. If you want more details, you can just click view program details and it takes you to a place you're probably very familiar with as far as the page on Training Connect. All the information is there as you would expect. So, um, so we're not replacing any of this stuff. Right? I mean, as far as the Training Connect Pathfinder, it's still there, but we're just trying to bring all the key pieces of information together in one place. So you have it. If you want more detail, you can still go to those original sources and, and dig deeper if you like. Um, with that, I think that is pretty much all the features we wanted to demonstrate today. So uh, thus concludes the demo. All right, um, unless of course, Ruth tells me I forgot anything. No? No, oh, I think you're good. Okay. All right, so with that, I think we can go ahead and um, open it up for you know questions people have. Uh, we, we've got a couple more things to cover as far as next steps, but I think it's a good time to pause and see um, what questions